Well, welcome, friends, once again to First Baptist Church, Grand Cayman. Thank you for joining us for our daily meditations from the Book of Numbers. And today, we come to chapter 18, which I'm heading to give or not to give. Folk have speculated that there must be some huge hidden deep well from which preachers like me over the years have continued to draw their sermon illustrations and funny stories. I was reminded of that as I was meditating on this passage in Numbers 18, which is about the Lord's servants being supported in their work by the offerings of the people of God. I guess some of you will have heard a version of what I'm about to tell you. Three ministers were chatting about what they did with the offerings in their churches. A Presbyterian, an Episcopalian, and a Baptist. The Presbyterian said, Well, I put all the offertory on a large plate. I throw it all up in the air. What lands on the plate is the Lord's. What lands on the floor is mine. The Episcopalian said, Well, I do something very similar. It's just the other way around. What lands on the plate is mine. And what lands on the floor is the Lord's. And the Baptist said, well, that's interesting. I do something a wee bit similar too. I put all the offertory on a huge plate. I throw it up in the air. And the money that remains in the air is for the Lord. And that which lands on the floor is all mine. Sadly and very seriously, of course, there are too many tales of financial impropriety in too many churches across the globe. And I suspect there's not a denomination who's escaped such problems. A pastor friend of mine, for example, had to leave his church because it could no longer afford to keep him. The reason? It emerged that the treasurer was siphoning off funds for his own personal use. And what did the other church leaders do? Call in the police? Sort it out? You must be joking. No, they sacked the pastor. Absolutely shocking. Here in Numbers 18, along with similar passages, the Lord clearly sets out the ongoing duties of the priests and Levites. Their full-time calling to serve at the tabernacle entail their practical support was taken care of by the rest of God's people. Now, of course, we need to exercise great care in our application of the principles here to our own day. At one level, every Christian should be a full-time Christian, whatever our daily calling might be. I remember as a young office worker and just recently converted, how liberating were verses such as Colossians 3.23, originally written to first century slaves. Quote, Whatever you do, work at it with all your heart, as working for the Lord, not for men. Nevertheless, there are those who are called, like those early disciples, to leave their jobs in fishing or the tax office or whatever, and enter full-time Christian ministry of different sorts at home and overseas, and live by our Lord's principle. Luke 10.7, the worker deserves their wages. Or as the Apostle Paul in 1 Corinthians 9 verses 13 and 14 links a passage like this in Numbers 18 to the support of Christian preachers. He says, Don't you know that those who serve in the temple get their food from the temple, and those who serve at the altar share in what is offered on the altar? And then the application. In the same way, the Lord has commanded that those who preach the gospel should receive their living from the gospel. Although he himself didn't always use that right, and being a tent maker by trade, there were times when he was, as many great workers for the gospel are today, bivocational or not so much a full-time workers, some of them, but overtime workers, as we may put it. I've got to tell you, I stand in awe of my fellow elders here at First Baptist, who do so much for the church whilst holding down incredibly responsible and demanding jobs in their workplaces. Two things as we draw to a close. First, don't fail to meditate on the marvellous 20th verse, will you? It's given to Aaron the high priest. While everybody on his team seems to be getting handouts, we read, You will have no inheritance in their land, nor will you have any share among them. Oh, that's a wee bit tough on him. No, there's something far better than God's gifts. The Lord himself, for the verse continues, I am your share and your inheritance among the Israelites. The God 
who is enough. By the way, you could try a party trick like those three ministers with your offering. Oh, don't bother about your money, etc. Just try this. If you are able, jump up in the air. And what stays up in the air, you can keep for yourself. And what lands on the floor is all for the Lord. That's real giving, for it's giving yourself, which is Christ-like, the Lord Jesus, who gave himself for us. God bless you today. Amen.